The next thing that we're gonna do is add some exits to our room and display those via text, right? So we are going to create a new script called exit. So we're gonna create C Sharp script in our scripts folder, a script called exit. And we're gonna double click it to open it. Now, exit is going to be a very simple little data class. It's not gonna have any functions. So we're gonna have a public string called key string. So this is what we're gonna be looking for uh, when we check to see what exit we're gonna go to. So it would be north, south, east, west, or steps, or something else. That's the keyword, right? Then we're gonna have a public string called exit description, which is what's gonna get displayed in the action log, right? So this is gonna say, there's a set of stairs to the left or to the west. Uh, and then finally, we're gonna have a public room called value room. And the reason I'm calling them key string and value room is because later on, we're gonna put these in a dictionary uh, and we're gonna look at dictionaries and I'll explain them. The last thing that we need here is we need to add the system dot serializable attribute. Now, why do we need to do this? The reason that we need to do this is because we want to be able to display the exit inside our inspector for our room scriptable object. So the room is gonna hold an array, a, a collection of exits, because we could have any number of exits, we could have any number of exits that we want from one room, and we wanna be able to display the variables inside the exit class. So the key string, exit description, and value inside the class, so we need to make it serializable. So what does the system serializable attribute do? The serializable attribute lets you embed a class with sub-properties in the inspector. You can use this to display variables in the inspector, similar to how a vector three shows up in the inspector. The name and a triangle to expand with the name and a triangle to expand its properties. To do this, you need to create a class that derives from system.object and give it the serializable attribute. So there's actually a nice blog post on serialization in Unity that's pretty in-depth if you're curious. Uh, the link is on the screen. You can also just uh, use your search engine of choice to search for serialization in Unity, and it should po pop up there at the top. And then we have a little picture here of what this is going to look like in the room inspector using system.serializable. I know that's something I've used in previous trainings, and I've never taken the time to explain. So for those of you who don't know, that is what it is. Okay. So we're gonna save our exit class, and then we are going to add an array of exits to our room. So we're gonna to return to the room class, and in room, we are going to add a public exit array called exits, and save it. And so now we're gonna, this is gonna give us some, some choices for the room, right? So we wanna display these along with the description. So we're gonna return to the game controller and we are going to want to add another list to the game controller, which is gonna be all the things that we can interact with in the room. So exits, items, whatever is in the room that the player can interact with. So this is also going to be public, but hidden in the inspector. So we're gonna use hide an inspector, public inter, oh, this is gonna be a public list of strings, and it's gonna be called interaction descriptions in room, which is a nice long variable name. And it's gonna be equal to a new list of the type string. Now we have our list of descriptions, right, which we're gonna fill up based on the room that we're in. So we're gonna go back to room navigation now, and in room navigation, we're going to add a private game controller called controller, and we're gonna get a reference to it in awake. So we're gonna say in awake, we're gonna say controller equals get component game controller. This is gonna find the game controller that's attached to the same game object and store a reference in the variable controller. And then we are going to declare a new public function that returns void called unpack 
exits in room. So what this is going to do is go over the array of exits in the current room and pass them over to the game controller to display on the screen. So we're going to use a for loop to do this. So we're going to type four and then you can just push tab twice to fill out the loop and then tab again to set the max. And we're going to put in current room dot exits dot length. So we want to go over all of the exits in the current room and we're going to then add them to the interaction descriptions in the room. So we're going to say controller dot interaction in descriptions in room dot add. And we're going to pass in current room dot exits I. So this is going to be whichever exit we're currently looping over, we are going to send the description to our list of descriptions. Let's just move this down so it's easier to read. So we're going to say, okay, we've just entered a room. We're going to unpack the exits, add them to our list of descriptions, and get ready to show them on the screen. Then, back in Game Controller, we're going to add a new function, which we will put under Display Room Text, which is going to be private and is going to be called Unpack Room. And it is going to call room navigation dot unpack exits in room. And we're going to call it from display room before the other stuff in display room, right? So when it's time to display a room, we're going to unpack it. And then we are going to add the descriptions into our combined text. So we're going to need to, again, join those into a, into a single string, right? So we're going to make a string called joined interaction descriptions. And that's going to be equal to string dot join. We're going to pass in, oops, new line again as the separator. And interaction descriptions in room dot to array, right? So we're converting the list of interaction descriptions into an array and joining it all up into one string where each item is separated by a, is on a new line. Uh, and then we can add that. Now our combined, the meaning of our combined text being called combined text takes on new relevance because we're gonna add in joined interaction descriptions. So when we use the plus operator with string, we join it together, right? We add those things together in one string. So we're gonna say, we're gonna display the room description, we're gonna have a new line, and then we're going to display the interaction descriptions, each of which is gonna be on its own line. Okay. So, if we save, Unpack room is getting called. Let's just, oh, yeah, see, I forgot to save that one. Save everything, save, 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 save. Now, let's return to Unity. And we need to add, oh, we've got room navigation. This is set up. We need to add some exits to our starting room or unexit. So here we're going to expand the exits array and we're going to just create uh, a new, wait a minute. That's not correct. What? Oh, it's a mono behavior. That's why this is not a mono behavior. Sorry, I made a mistake. So the reason that this is not getting serialized property properly is because it's still inheriting from mono behavior here. I forgot to remove this because I just want this to be serialized as a data class, right? So that we can display it in the inspector. So save that, get rid of the mono behavior and then on our starting room now, yeah, we can, well, it's a good teachable moment, right? So this is why we don't want to make it a mono behavior. We want to make it just a regular serializable C-sharp class so that we can display it and edit like this in the inspector. So the key string for our first exit is going to be north. 
And the description is going to be, you see a dark doorway to the north. And the value is going to be a new room. So right now we just have one room. So let's actually create our second room. So I'm going to select the rooms folder, choose create, text adventure room. And this is going to be called orb room. And now let's add the description to that. You are in a vast dark hall. And the room name is going to be orb room. And we'll add one exit to this as well, which is the key string is going to be south, right? Because we just came from the north, south, and it's going to say there is a door to the south with light coming through it. And that will take us back to the starting room, right? So now we have two linked rooms, or now we need to drag our orb room into the exit to the north. So we have two linked rooms with descriptions and one exit each going back and forth to each other. Let me take a moment to take some questions from the chat and we will continue. Oh, hi, Jason. I'm glad to hear you found the explanation about system.serializable useful. If you're curious, it kind of, serialization is kind of like at the heart of the way Unity works, especially with regard to the inspector and stuff. So uh, Lucas Meyer, who's one of our like senior developers, he wrote this it's kind of long, but it's very in-depth uh, explanation about how serialization works with regard to instantiation and the inspector and all this stuff uh, that's at that blog post. And I, I think it's might be worth a read if you're if you're interested. Um, Oscar Russo asks, why isn't room a scriptable object? It is. Room is definitely a scriptable object. Oh, exit. So it's a good question. So why Oscar Russo asks, why isn't exit a scriptable object? The reason is because of the nature of an exit, right? The exit is never going to be an independent object. We're not going to have a, a we might have a room without an exit, but we're never going to have an exit without a room, right? So I don't really see the value of having objects for the exits when it's also very relational, right? We need it to, it's going to be relative to that it's always going to be related to a room, right? So they're kind of tightly coupled. So I thought just making exits a serializable class that are in, serialized inside the room scriptable objects was a was the way to go. But of course, you could you could totally make them scriptable objects uh, if you saw you know maybe if you wanted magic exits that are just floating in midair or something. I don't know. Uh, you could do it for sure. Tempera says, text-based game in Unity sounds like overkill. Cool, though, don't see many text-based games being made these days. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that I always want to do sessions teaching more architecture and design pattern stuff, and that's really hard to do if I have to, like, make a shooting game first uh, and do a whole lot of work setting up whatever action game or whatever it is. Um, what's cool about this is the content and the assets are basically zero or it's just a bunch of words that I can just type out myself quickly. And it's basically a text game is basically only systems and only architecture, right? So it's kind of a cool way to approach talking about design patterns, interactivity and architecture without having to be like, oh, and then I'm going to make these power up game objects and all these whatever shooting script and a lot of other stuff that doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, 